Sadiq Khan, who's starting to ban images of women in bikinis, you know, in public signage, he's bringing in Sharia law. This is the main show. You've seen this YouTube video. It's these two Muslim guys, and they're basically breaking down and attacking a video I've done with InfoWars talking about the recent terror attacks, Sharia law, radical Islam. Here's what they had to say. Greetings of peace. How are you guys doing? You know, Martin Luther King said that the greatest danger for humanity is sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Assalamu alaikum. How you guys doing? Welcome to another episode of the Dean Show. Dr. Sabil, how you been? Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. All praise be to Allah. I'm doing good, brother. How are you? Alhamdulillah. We made it to another month of Ramadan. Now, not too long ago, we were in a car. We were uh, taking a little ride and making the best out of the time. We decided to reach out to our friends over at the Alex Jones Show. And we should call it radical Islam. That is what it is. I feel like it's a breath of fresh air that we're going to have a president. He's quite frankly not scared to say it for once. Radical Islam. Exactly. Radical Islam. Let's all say it together. Islamophobia machine is affecting even our good friends at the Alex Jones show. And can you bring people up to speed what we were kind of talking about? Do you remember exactly? Yes. Uh, so Alex Jones, uh, he did a show about radical Islamic terrorism. And he kept on blaming Islam, not just the Muslims. And he kept on giving examples. And his reasoning is that Muslims are doing act of terrorism. Islam is responsible. And now he's using the term radical Islamic terrorism. And we should call it radical Islam. That is what it is. I feel like it's a breath of fresh air that we're going to have a president who's quite frankly not scared to say it for once. Radical Islam. Exactly. Radical Islam. Let's all say it together. Islamophobia machine is affecting even our good friends at the... Alex Jones show. He's blanketing all of the Muslims and the faith of Islam, saying that, you know, Islam is inciting violence. So what me and you, what we did was we did a show to refute his allegations and to show his double standard and to show to him that Islam is a faith of peace and unity and justice, that he needs to read the Quran to get the true picture of Islam in context. He needs to read the Quran. So then what happened? Two days ago, three days ago, received a video clip and that shows that they did a rebuttal to our response to his show. So today, inshallah, God willing, we are going to provide a nice, wise, evidence-based response to him. Not to debate him, but just to show him that Islam is a faith of peace. It's wrong for him or anyone to attach uh, radicalism or terrorism with the beautiful, peaceful faith of Islam. There's got a, the see, there's a lot of, lo that show, there was a lot of love that went into it, meaning that we were, sh we were, we were coming across not hostile, belligerent, you know, trying to offend somebody, but, you know, putting facts in their place and delivering a message, sharing and giving an invitation. And now it's Ramadan and we're putting in some more time and love. Look at that. And the Alex Jones show, they had responded to that. And I don't know which one of the guys that works with him, he was took this video. And you don't see the, that, same, uh, that same response with the love. You see someone, um, I, I, I would say, who's very... Uh, Can we go back to Allah Akbar? Allah Akbar, chanting Allah Akbar. That have been working with radical Islam, protecting the mosque. Also, at the same time, we invited him to you know come on our program or even you know invite it doesn't have to be me maybe you or any any other you know reputable um scholar of islam to kind of someone who's who who's in this area of expertise and to sit and you know have a nice discussion so we didn't kind of get that same thing back but let's go ahead and cover the the response that his the alex jones show they did towards what we had put put together so we're going to go ahead and and let the audience uh, see this one part and then we'll come back to it in sharing with them 
that there is only one Islam, there is no such thing as radical Islam or progressive Islam or liberal Islam. There is only one Islam. And there you have it. You heard it straight from his mouth. There is only one Islam. So we should just go ahead and drop the radical part because Islam within itself, what it actually is, is radical ideology. And if you actually go look at the families, the Christian families that live in Iraq, say in Mosul right now, that are being slaughtered simply because they have a different uh, belief, a different faith, they are being murdered by Islam, which is a radical ideology. There's no other way around it. This guy explained it so clear. There is no progressive Islam. There is no radical Islam. There is only one Islam. So, I mean, he commended you. You said you, you, you did a really great job of explaining that there's only one Islam and you should take actually so he agreed you should take radical out of Islam because that was the whole point that there's no such thing as radical Islam Islam means peace acquired by submitting to the will of God so he's but now he's trying to say that Islam just in itself is a radical ideology and then he gave you saw what here he would he was saying uh, people being killed in uh, in Iraq or whatnot and trying to link that back to Islam what do you say? Right. You know, when I looked at his response, I cannot connect the dots. I cannot understand his rationale. You know, we gave to him with evidence that there is only one Islam. And that Islam is not radical. It's not Sunni, Shia. It's a peaceful Islam. It speaks about peace and justice. And w what he did was, he just took that term Islam and he said, okay, f that one Islam is radical Islam. It, it doesn't make sense. So a response to uh, that person who has done the video. So his rationale is that some Muslims are committing acts of terrorism. They are doing oppression. They are converting minorities in the name of Allah, according to him. Now, if that is the reasoning for him to label Islam as radical, then with the same reasoning, we could show to him, we can say to him with evidence that Christians have done and they are also doing now in the 21st century. Acts of radicalism, acts of oppression. Where these children lived with their parents in a fundamentalist Christian home. For the nine children, life in paradise was anything but. We cover up eight of their faces because they are the survivors. Survivors of a violent form of discipline practiced by their parents, Kevin and Elizabeth Schatz. The one face not covered is their seven-year-old adopted daughter, Lydia. She was killed by her parents. They pleaded guilty to killing Lydia and seriously injuring her 11-year-old sister, Zariah, who almost died. Authorities say Kevin and Elizabeth Schatz beat their children regularly because they believe God wanted them to. Forceful conversion and mass shootings. The vast majority of people who are doing the mass shootings in America are not men. Muslims at all. So, exactly, the young white men. Uh, it turns out that even the people who are ideologically motivated, you mentioned ideology, you are seven times more likely to ki be killed by a right-wing extremist, a, a racist or an anti-government nut job, seven times more likely to be killed by that person is that than by a Muslim. Is that I All over the world. And here are some examples, Brother Eddie. You know, the army, of the, the army of the Lord, the army of God, they are responsible in the USA for having many, many mass shootings, like in abortion clinics, in Planned Parenthood clinics. And they have killed people in the name of Jesus, in the name of Christianity. How about the Lord's army in Uganda? Thousands of innocent people, especially the Muslims, have been slaughtered by Christians in the name of Christianity. How about the Eastern Lightning in China? They believe that Jesus will come back as a woman. And now they are slaughtering men and children and, and people who are innocent. What's the name of that group? The Eastern Lightning. Mm -hmm trying to recruit new members to their Christian cult. One diner refused to give them her number. They beat her to death. This, you can is, a, this is a Christian group? It's a Christian group. Uh, obviously, they don't represent mainstream Christianity, but you're making this, this uh, connecting this the same way he's trying to take this fringe, you know, element. ISIS. And trying to prompt them up as if they're representing Islam. I, the, he usually, the insane state, that's who they usually use. In yes, of course. They're always misguided people in the, in the followers of any ideology, any faith, any culture. Mm -hmm. So what that person is doing is, He's taking some minute minority of the misguided Muslims 
for whatever agenda that they are using the name of Islam and killing innocent people, what we are saying is, there are Christians who have done and they are doing it now. Right? I mean, Andrew Brovik, he killed 78 people in Norway in the name of Christ, in the name of Christianity. But we as sane people, thinking people, rational people, we're not going to blame Christianity for the acts of the Christians, mm -hmm. the misguided Christians. So the same rationale is he or no one else should use the term radical or the term terrorist with the beautiful word of Islam, the peaceful Islam. And that's what we kept saying during that car ride, that you, you can't take these fringe elements and have it like as if they represent the mainstream of, for instance, you know, the drug cartel in in Mexico or um, the some of the other um, drug cartels that heavily enforced religious values and rules that have done horrific. I mean, there's places in Mexico that you can't you cannot actually go at towns that, you know, the, the murder rate uh, is it's through the roof you know even the police and, doesn't go there i guess that, yeah and, the army. And, ma and many of many of the many of these guys are wearing crosses you follow me and they would consider themselves christian you follow me but it'd be insane to go ahead and use this as an example to say that these people represent the mainstream christian that'd be insane yeah. but this these individuals from this day alex jones show that's what they're actually doing you know in every continent you know besides antarctica i guess there are christian groups who are doing acts of terrorism in the name of Christ. But we are not going to say, you know, radical Christian terrorist or radical Christianity terrorist because that's not fair. We don't want to malign the faith of Christianity but the acts of these misguided Christians. Mm -hmm. In the same way, we want to request him, drop the word radicalism, drop the word terrorism, terrorist, in associating that with the word Islam. You know, that, that's just double standard because we should use it for every religion or no religion. Mm -hmm. But why stop there? Suppose if an American or a British or a uh, Indian Pakistani commits acts of terrorism, we are not going to say, you know, radical Pakistani terrorist, radical uh, American terrorist. That does not make sense. But why should we stop there? If a white person commits act of terrorism, we are not going to say, you know, ra radical uh, white uh, race terrorist. Why should we stop there? If a man commits act of terrorism, are we going to blame all the men, by the way, right? Radical men terrorist, radical women terrorist, a radical rich terrorist, radical poor terrorist. It just becomes insane. So the best thing that we can do is we have to drop the term radical Islamic terrorist and we should drop the term radical Christianity terrorist and we should blame those individuals, may that be Muslims, Hindus, Jews, or people of no faith. We should blame them, all of us. And before we go to break, I think it's also, it's very important to, to, for us, I mean, if you're trying to have good relations with your neighbors, Muslims are not going any, anywhere, Christians mm -hmm. aren't going anywhere. We're, we're here on this earth, we need to learn to live together, and especially, you know, you know people have to um, understand this is very important. You don't, like, just go your neighbors next door and you start having a hostile belligerent attitude with him and you know uh, how are you guys going to um, uh, live in peace and harmony it's not going to work you know what I mean so I think that's really important is for them to drop this really belligerent hostile attitude and open the doors of communication but we had covered in another episode we had a guest uh, a, a professor Dr. Barnett who's been on this uh, mm -hmm. Alex Jones show and he has a connection with, with them and he's trying to reach out uh, but he, one of his um, theories is, and many people agree with this, why they're coming after Islam like this is because it's a big payday. You get, there's money to be made. Yeah, it's a business. It's a business, bashing it's Islam. It's a business. You know, before there used to be like 10 or 12 uh, Islamophobic organizations. Now they're in the 90s, close to 100 of them. And these people are multimillionaires. They get a lot of grants, a lot of support, a lot of sponsors. Hating Islam became a business. Yeah. And I think, you know, good, good hearted people, good Christians, Jews, whoever is out there, even they see through this. And, you know, the, the, the hostile type, you know, the people who have that, you know, that hate in them. I mean, we might not be able to reach them, but we can reach those people who are following actually because this person would 
say he's a Christian, but in the words of Jesus, you know, one of the greatest commandments is to love thy neighbor. Of course. Is that what it is? To Same love? thing in Islam, by the way. Yeah. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, you know, if you eat, you're full, and if your neighbors are hungry, you're not a believer. You're not a full believer. So we are supposed to look out for our neighbors, not hate them, not kill them, not terrorize them, but we are supposed to love them. We are supposed to connect with them. We are supposed to take care of them. And that is what Islam is. And that's the message we want to convey to the world. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more here on the Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Back here on the Dean Show, I really didn't uh, plan on doing, this was kind of spontaneous. So we didn't plan, I didn't plan on doing um, spending much time on this thought I wanted to just quickly um, answer some of these points the the other points he mentioned when you mentioned there's only one Islam submission to the will of the creator not the creation uh, he said now that there are Sunni Sufi Wahhab this that and the other and he named and he said okay I got you here mm -hmm. you know what, what would you say well again I'm going to stand by and Muslims stand by by the point that there is only one Islam that was signed by Creator, Allah, in Arabic. So there is only one Islam. That one Islam is uh, based upon the source of the Qur'an and through the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So we have the Qur'an which is intact. We have the Sunnah or the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which is intact. Anyone who follows that, we call that person as a Muslim. And the ideology that we follow, we say that that is Islam. So if anyone is going to ask me the question, you know, Sabil, who are you? Are you a Sunni Muslim, Shia Muslim? I would say that I am just a Muslim. If I'm going to ask, if I'm, someone will ask me the question, which Islam do you follow? The Wahhabi, the Sufi, the Sunni, the Shia, I would say I only follow one Islam, which is based upon the Quran and the example of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And that Islam speaks about the absolute oneness of God. That Islam speaks about there is only one Quran, one version of the Quran. For all the Muslims, that Islam speaks about uh, when we pray, what direction that we follow. So all the Muslims, we follow the same direction. That one Islam, all Muslims are united with that one Islam. When we say that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was no more than a prophet. He was just a man. He was a messenger of God. And that one Islam, that all the Muslims, we agree that we believe that this life is a short life, the life of test and trial. And there would be a day of resurrection and heaven and hell. So Muslims are united by that one Islam, the one given by Muhammad, peace be upon him, coming from God. Yeah. I think the point, I think this was also like a straw man argument. This is kind of diverting what we actually were, you, you were making a point over that uh, it was focusing on Islam cannot be radical because Islam is actually, if you, you want to really get technical, you look at the Lord's Prayer. You know, everyone knows that who's a Christian. Oh, our Father. We would say, oh, our Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. So submitting to the will of God, right? That's Islam. That's what it means. It's just in, it's just in, in, if people would understand that, if you say, oh, it's just in Aramaic. And that's the language. If you were to equate which language did Jesus speak, it would be closer to Arabic, Aramaic. Those are sister languages. So it's Absolutely. just submission to the will of God. So you can't, um, it's totally uh, insane to say, okay, r um, peaceful, radical submission. You can't, like, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yes. It's a contradictory term. You yeah. cannot say, you know, uh, radical, peaceful terrorist. Mm -hmm. Right? It's just a contradiction. So Islam is peaceful. It teaches peace. It propagates peace. And there are so many places in the Quran. You know, obviously, this is a message for all the viewers, especially that person from the Alex Jones show. That here is the gold standard, which is the Quran. And there are some misguided Muslims who are going against the main concept, the teachings of the Quran. So the Quran speaks and preaches that humanity should be united under worship of one God. That we are all made into different nations and tribes. So the Quran says in chapter 49, verse number 13. So God is speaking and God is saying, Allah is saying that, O oh humanity, I have created you from one single male and one single female and made you into nations and tribes that you get to know each other. Not that you may despise each other, you get to know each other. And the best amongst you is the one who is the most God-fearing, well-mannered person. Islam came to unite humanity. Muhammad, peace be upon him, the peaceful, the anti-racist teachings that he propagated, he said that an Arab is no superior than a non-Arab. 
A non-Arab is no superior than an Arab. A white is not superior than a black. A black is not superior than a white. All of you are children of Adam and Adam, and Adam was made from dust. That doesn't sound like a radical teaching. I mean, it's a radical, but it's not uh, a teaching that disunites humanity. It's a teaching that unites humanity. It's all inclusive. It is moral and just teachings. The Quran says in chapter 5, verse number 32, that taking one innocent life is like taking the life of all of humanity. Saving one life is like saving the life of all of humanity. And these are the teachings of Islam, Brother Eddie, that the world needs to know it. So we have the gold standard, which is Islam. We have the Quran. And then there are always some misguided people. So my message, our message, the message from the Muslims is that just like we don't want to judge Christianity by KKK, we don't want to judge Judaism by some people who are doing acts of uh, extremism on innocent people up there. We don't want to judge Hinduism by some racist Hindus who are torturing and oppressing uh, Christians and Muslims. We don't want to judge Buddhism by some Buddhist monks who are doing genocide on the Muslims and minorities in the same way. Do not judge Islam by the actions of some misguided people. If you want to judge what Islam is, read the Quran, pick up a copy of the Quran. We can send you a free copy of the Quran. Call us 800-662-ISLAM. Read the Quran and then you can think of your own what the Quran is, a peaceful book. So that's our message to them. Do not judge Islam or any faith by the actions of a few misguided individuals. He, I don't want to spend too much more time on this. With the other part, we'll go to it. Let's not say it together. How about we take the advice of our friend and not offend over 1.7 billion people all over the globe and pulling out these statistics. We're going to address that now. There we go again. It's 2016. What are we worried about? Offending people. When I so, you know, th this is really important. You know, you know, um, anybody, we have a strong emphasis in Islam. It's very important. Our intention. What is our intention behind making this show? What's your intention? When you pray, when you give in charity, when you're doing these things, the genuine sincere intention for us doing it is that we're going to reach some hearts and clear some misconceptions and deliver this, this beautiful message to people who have gotten caught up in much of the confusion. Now we ask these individuals, I ask this individual seriously to, for the Alex Jones and others, you know, if, you, if you're a truly practicing Christian and you go by that, what's the greatest commandment? To love thy neighbor, you know what I mean? You're trying to make that, you can still critique and talk and whatnot, but when you, when you, it seems like there's a lot of hate-filled rhetoric that comes into this, and it's not, not working towards uh, a common good, a common goal, right? Uh, so he, he brings up, uh, the next thing is some of these statistics and whatnot. Uh, how, what do you have to say about that? Well, you know, first and foremost, we have to redefine the word terrorism. Terrorism is anyone who incites terror in, in, in innocent people. As simple as that. When we take the definition, that means um, the 400, 406,000 killings by gun violence in this country, every single one of them is act of terrorism. Right? And people who are doing the killing out there, you know, he's, he's saying that uh, Muslims are the only ones doing it. Muslims don't have a monopoly. We can give a long list of acts of terrorism now and in the past by people of different faiths, especially the Christians. You know, the Liberation Army of Tripura in India, they're killing innocent people. And these are Christians, they're doing it in the name of Christianity. And they're doing it now, today as we speak. And he's saying that, you know, Muslims are storming the hospitals and the schools and killing, butchering. You know, the Eastern Lightning Group, in China, in the name of Christ, they are storming the schools and killing innocent children. And they have done it for many, many years. But you and me, we will not blame Christianity for that. Christianity does not teach that, neither does Islam. That goes back if you're being sensible, reasonable, yes. and what's your intention? If your intention is to have boost your ratings, sensationalism, selective statistics, and selective news reports, but... That's, uh, that's a fact that you have far more. You would be rewarded in the hereafter. But, but, but Christians do that every single day in this country. Do they blow people up? Yes, so. Uh, Christians every day. People walk into post office. I mean, uh, people walk into post offices. 
They walk into schools. That's what Columbine is. I mean, I could do this all day long. There's so, there are so many more examples of Christians, and I happen to be a Christian. That's back to this notion of your idealizing Christianity in my mind, to my read. There's so many more examples, Ayan, of Christians who do that than you could ever give me examples of Muslims who have done that inside this country where you live and work. They did also did studies. There's this poll that um, Muslims are at such a lower level of murder rates, right? Um, like 0.003% or something in the U.S. Yeah, I mean, so this is totally, f yeah. uh, it's fabricated, it's, it's a lie. What do you say about these statistics as you bring out? Most of these things are in these war zones that have been just bombed in the Stone Age. You know? Right, right. You know, but again, even, even, mm. even, if, even if Muslims, if this is true, again, it's opposite to Islam. It's like even if all, I often make this example, if every Muslim was drinking alcohol, Right? That doesn't would mean that Islam allowed it. Islam prohibits it. Same thing if every Muslim was was doing injustice and harming uh, innocent people. That Islam is free of it. Of course, of course. Uh, you know, so anyone can build any case, but that case would not be a, a fair and just case, by the way. And you made a really good point. Just because some Muslims are using the word Sharia law or jihad or any Arabic terminology and doing or committing acts of violence, we have to first and foremost see what does the Quran says, what does Islam says about it. Islam explicitly prohibits killing of innocent people. No doubt about it. Even Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that even in a just war, do not kill the innocent people, do not kill the women and children, means non-combatants. So the, I also mentioned this, that even if the enemy kills all of the innocent Muslims or civilians, even then Islam does not give them the right to even touch, harm, or kill innocent people from the enemy side. And that's how careful Islam is. So we can go case by case and say, okay, you know, this many Muslims have done this many killing and this many Christians, but that's not the right way. It would be an endless game to play. The best thing would be, does Islam incite violence or incite peace? Every single verse in Islam, in the Quran, example of Muhammad, peace be upon him, incites unity, incites morality, incites justice, and the outcome of justice is peace. Yeah. I invite him, I mean, that's the thing, I like what you said, and it goes back, what's your intention? Is it towards peace? Then you'll sit with your neighbor, not throw a mic in someone's face, or maybe you got the gun, and you're getting gangster and whatnot. I mean, come and meet, sit uh, visit the mosque. I mean, sincerely, genuinely be like, look, I don't understand. This is what I hear. And, and sit and let, let us reason together and see to put things in their co proper context. Because if you're, you're going to get what you're looking for. You follow me? Right. You know, a, a really important point we also need to touch upon is not to justify violence by some Muslims, but to understand violence by some Muslims. You know, according to the drone missile operators, they have done the interview, so a news channel done the interview of them, two of them, and they said, the drone missile operators, they said that 95% of our intended targets, we miss it. That means the drones, they are falling on innocent people, the women, the children, the non-combatants. And then they said on the news channel, that now we wonder how come their radicalism, extremism, terrorism by some Muslims, is it because we are killing their innocent people? by air strikes and drone missiles and supporting of the dictators, mm -hmm. occupation. You know, all of these things we need to understand that why are people angry? Because anger boils over, people take things in their own hands and they can use the word Sharia law, jihad and commit, and commit acts. So we have to, if we are going to tackle radicalism and terrorism by anyone, we have to know the cause of it. And the cause is people are angry, their homes are being uh, destroyed, their family are being killed, their land is being, you know, sent back to the Stone Age, and dictators are oppressing them, and that's the reason they're angry. At those foreign powers who are supporting all of those things. So if we are going to tackle terrorism, we have to look at the cause, we have to tackle the cause. And once we do justice, outcome would be peace. Mm -hmm. Not just in the Middle East, but all over the world. And that's the prescription that Islam provides. Do justice with people. And that's the way, my dear friend, that we need to share with him. So this would be, uh, again, going towards Islam doesn't justify 
doing such evil acts, if someone would take the law into their own hands and go and kill innocent people and bombings, that's against. But you're talking about now, hey, it has to do not with Islam, but this is a geo political thing geopolitical none of these exactly, guys yes. these guys when they're cutting ahead the or whoever is because there's one aspect many because this show the alex jones show is known for calling out uh different events as being false flags you know setups and whatnot but it's it's interesting it's selective mm-hmm. now for they'll say that for many other events but now if the guy has a name um uh that's somewhat islamic does it? No, no. Now here it's like we're not going to go down a rabbit hole and exploit it. We're going to just say the Muslims did it. You follow me? But it's important that w- that we know that uh, Islam is free of it. Uh, Dr. Robert Pape and many terrorist experts that they don't bring on their mainstream media platforms. These people also come out. These are academics who substantiate this claim. Purely secular. Because you see, many uh, Muslim suicide terrorist groups are also pure, purely secular, such as the PKK in Turkey. The PKK in Turkey, which did uh, numerous suicide attacks in the 1990s, uh, is again a Marxist, read anti religious suicide terrorist group. Because you see, if Islam, as uh, sort of a radical religion, or if it were just radical Muslims uh, doing this, then what you would expect is sort of this thin veneer of suicide attack kind of scattered all around the world. Uh, You would expect that, oh, there's 1.4 billion Muslims. You know, there's this teeny tiny fringe of Muslims kind of everywhere who'd be willing to do suicide attack. Uh, But that's not the way the data looks. It's really concentrated, and it's really concentrated in occupations. This is has to do with foreign invasions. Yeah, I mean, so a sane person listening to this show, they have to think, you know, where were the acts of terrorism, radicalism in the Middle East uh, 60, 70, 90, 100 years ago? It was a peaceful place. When oppression and the dictators and the colonial powers and the, and the European powers, when they came in, they occupied and oppressed and left the dictators. That's how people became angry, you know. How come you guys are oppressing us and killing our innocent people? It's a human problem. When, whenever there is oppression on human beings, people act and take the things in their own hand. Even though Islam condemns anyone taking things in their own hand and killing innocent people, Islam condemns it. Yeah, and when and when yes. you when you when you add up all the amount of bombs that have been dropped on on these Muslim majority countries, they're they're not in the hundreds; they're in the thousands. Yes. Nobody dropped a bomb here. There's th- thousands of thousands, and now you, displacement. People are becoming refugees, making refugees. Go back home. Well, stop bombing my home. You know what I mean? People there are you just go. where? You, what's going on? I mean, so this is the root cause. Let's look at the root root cause, and then we'll understand the problem. You find me? You, you know, a, a good example is in 1942 or 41, right? The Pearl Harbor. In the 19 early 40s, uh, U.S. became angry. Japanese attacked the Pearl Harbor and killed the soldiers. What did we do? Out of anger to reply to the cause, cause and effect is always there. The U.S. government went went there. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, two bombs were dropped. Close to 300,000 people died, innocent people, right? Bombs were dropped right on the civilian center. So it's really important for us. There's always a cause and effect. If we see that there is a problem, we have to understand what's the cause of the problem. The cause of the problem is not Islam. It is geopolitical. Once we take care of that, inshallah, God willing, there would be justice, there would be unity, and there would be peace. So that's our intention, really, to reach out to people from this Alex Jones show and any other uh, networks out there, people sit with the Muslims, talk with the Muslims. Let's have some uh, some civil conversations and, and, and really try to work together for a common good. That's beautiful, beautiful. That You can't go around there. Connect, educate yourself. Two ways to be fooled is by believing something that's not true or refusing, pushing away, not wanting to, building up a wall to not let what is true come to you. And great opportunity is to visit a mosque, sit with the Muslims, those places of worship are not bomb making factories come inside look inside they are peacemaking meet, factories meet, meet, peacemaking factories <laughs> okay. meet the people inside who are dedicating their lives to the service of the creator of the heavens and earth the same creator that created Jesus the one that Jesus prayed to call people to worship that's the creator we're worshiping the one God worship him alone not his creation 
delivering this message to you. That's our intention to unify, to bring some love, more love to you guys. We dedicated the car ride and most of the show we didn't, I didn't plan on doing the whole episode, but almost over 80, 90% was. So I hope that this doesn't go in vain. I hope the people will really look at, you know, our genuine attempt to uh, clear mes- much much of this misinformation and hopefully the invitation will be accepted. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khairan. That's that peace. Full greeting. We started with peace. We end with peace. Salam alaikum. In the words of Jesus, how would he say it? Shalam alaikum. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. Thank you very much. Salams. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.